He realized that hearts and minds were being influenced by misinformation on campus and in the media, and he wanted to help combat misinformation through education. He saw the tools that were being offered by Stand With Us, and he wanted to help support that effort. It's people like Barry Baum that are the founders of Stand With Us. It's people like Barry Baum that are the movers and shakers in the new world of Israel advocacy, which Jerry and I are now living and breathing. Barry is a special person, and tonight, in this room, there is a collection of movers and shakers, people like Barry, who saw the lies and misinformation being fed to our future, lies and misinformation being taught through a very liberal media that too frequently leaves out important information. They saw the threat of radical Islam that is now like a monster that is staring at us, and we are looking down the throat of that monster. They felt the danger, and they wanted to get involved. They wanted to do something. People like Barry said, who is standing up for the Jewish people? Who is standing up for Israel with all these lies? Who will protect the Jewish people from the lies that lead to anti-Semitism? Who? Who will clearly point out the existential threat coming from radical Islam and the dangerous marriage between radical Islam and the radical left? And in, the, in 2000 and 2001, they waited, but there were no voices, and there was limited leadership and limited action. In Pirkei Avot, we learn, in a place where there is no man, strive to be that man. And that is what this group of us did together. We did it together. I want you to meet some of the people who have been our partners for the last five years. People on the board of Stand With Us, like Esther Renzer, the national president. The side-offs, the side-offs, the Seamuses. <laughs> Joyce and Aubrey Chernick. The Iskowitzes, Allison Taylor, Alan Howard, the Milsteins, Aggie Hoffman, the Benjis, Libby Lieber, Roberta Sy, Irina Bragan, Jennifer Cutner, Karen David, Rebecca Olsch. It's dark, so I don't know if you can even see their faces if we uh, ask them to stand, but uh, there, are th there are four tables here that belong to stand with us, and I would love for you to just see, see these people because they are so special. Um, and tonight, the rabbi and the board of Chabad of Bel Air decided that our work, our work is important, and tonight they are honoring all of us because of the priorities that we all share, to sound the alarm, to clarify the challenge of the lies, to educate the world. Tonight, Chabad of Bel Air is saying, you know what? The work that you do is critical. Let us honor the people who do that work. So thank you, Chabad of Bel Air. In this room, there is a table of treasures, uh, although everybody in the room is a, it represents a universe, but there's a special table of treasures. They're Holocaust survivors, and when the lights go on later, you can see my mother is at that table with her friends, and thank you very much for being here. And I want to I wanna tell you a quick, shocking story that just happened to me the other day. I was getting my nails done the other day, something frivolous, and while I sat there, in walked a Holocaust survivor. She booked an appointment for later that day and then walked out the door. As a child of Holocaust survivors, I always feel a connection to every survivor I see. I turned to my manicurist and I asked her, did you know that the woman who was just here was a survivor of the Holocaust? And she kind of half nodded as though she really didn't know what I was talking about, but she didn't want to say that to me. I then took the risk and asked her, have you ever heard of the Holocaust? And she said, no. I asked her, have you ever heard of Adolf Hitler? And she said, no. And I said, have you ever heard of the Nazis? And she said, no. My friends, there are people like Ahmadinejad who are teaching that the Holocaust never took place. And for a woman like my manicurist, lies about the Holocaust will fill the void of missing information. Shall we sit back and not correct misinformation? There are people who are teaching college students that Israel attacked the Arab world in 1948, and then again in 1967. 
or that there are no Jews in Israel prior to the end of the Holocaust. Our own history is being twisted now. Our own connection to the Holy Land is being undermined and questioned. Shall we not teach? People are lying about the Jewish people and about Israel. These are very dangerous times because lies and misinformation lead to anti-Semitism. If you remember nothing else that I've said tonight, please remember that you have an obligation, and I hope you will meet that obligation, to teach, to be patient. Do not assume that people know and understand our history. Be patient and teach. And if you make the commitment to teach, Stand With Us will give you the tools to do it. We have brought you a tool this evening at your tables. It's called Israel 101. Read it and offer it to someone else that you know. Ask us to send you additional copies, and we'll be happy to do so. Stand With Us is committed to challenging misinformation and saying never again, and meaning it. We will not stand by as people lie about Israel and the Jewish people. Never again must mean something for all of us. Thank you again.